Welcome back to Data Analysis YouTube channel. In this particular tutorial, we will be going right into the most interesting features of Microsoft Excel, which is the use of formulas and functions. Now, this is what makes a spreadsheet application to be very unique and different from other applications like word processors. It is your ability to use functions and formulas to manipulate a huge range of data within seconds, like literally within seconds and within minutes, and you get accurate results. So before we go right into the use of the formulas, we will start with explaining the formulas that an Excel beginner must know because it is important as you go along your knowledge of Microsoft Excel, you're going to build on this, on the knowledge of this basic formulas and functions to work with other complicated formulas and functions. So before we go into that, we are going to um, mention that if you want to use Excel functions, right, you can get Excel functions in different ways. One of them is the formula tab. So I've just opened on the formulas tab. I'm just hovering around it right now. You see the insert function button, right? When you click on the insert function button, you have a beautiful dialog box that has just popped up that says you can you can also search for a function by typing a brief description of what you want to do and then you click go and you can also select a function from the drop down that you have or you can select a category right so you have all of the functions financial functions date and time functions mathematical and trigonometric functions you have statistical functions database logical information engineering cube so it's a large it's a huge range of categories of functions that you can select from so i'm just going to i want to close this and this is just one of the ways. The second way is that you can go to recently used. So going, clicking on the drop down for recently used um, functions shows you all the functions that you have recently used, right? And you can just refer to it just in case you're doing the same things repetitively. So you can just go back to recently used and get what you want. The third way is you can enter the function or the formula manually. And this is if you can remember actually what you what you want to work with. So for example, if you want to sum a group or a range of cells, you just come and type sum and you open the bracket and you select the range of cells that you want to sum and you just close the bracket. But this is very easy if you can remember what the function you want to use is. Now, the other way that you can just go straight to the function is on the home tab and you see this sigma, you see this icon right here, right? So you click on the drop down by the side of the icon, the sum, the sum um, icon, and then you see all the functions, right? So you see sum, average, count numbers, max, mean, more functions. More functions open the same dialog box we had when we opened the insert function icon in the formulas tab. So let us go right into it. Yes, I was trying to close that. So as a way, we, as a way to already know the must know functions that an Excel user beginner must know, this is what is displayed. So you have sum, average, count numbers, max and mean. So these are the functions that a beginner must know because other functions is a build up on this one and when you know this the other ones becomes really easy for you to understand so let us get started and we will start with sum sum and when you type in the sum function i'm typing them manually right now you can also see what you're doing in the formula bar right here 
You can also see what you're doing and you can edit a formula actually from the formula bar. So I do the sum and I select the range of cells I want to add and I also close the bracket. And I hit the enter button on my keyboard. Now I cannot see the values because of course the, and the, the, the result is, is more than the, the width of the column. So I just expand the column so that I can see this properly. So I'm just going to type here sum so that it is easy to, to, to relate with. And very interestingly, so what if the, the question will come, what if I want to add um, numbers in a range of cells, but not exactly everything. I want to stagger the, I want to stagger my, my manipulations. What do I do? So this is one of the ways you can add. You can do C2 plus C3 plus C4, but this is not so efficient because imagine that you have a column that has 2000 values, for example. You cannot do this for 2000 values in, in a few seconds or minutes. It would not be efficient because you might even miss out some cells out of fatigue, right? So this is why using the sum function is very efficient. Another way we can do this, of course, is like I mentioned before, you want to sum a group of cells, but you don't want to add everything in the column or the row. I can do this and select this and put the comma and select this. And I close the parenthesis and I have this. So like I mentioned earlier, you can see the formulas that I used to get this in the formula bar. So this is the formula bar. The formula bar shows me what I have done exactly. So basically I was, I did the sum of C2 to C6 and I added C9 and I went, I staggered it and I added C15 to C18. So this is possible in Excel as well. So this is just for the purposes of um, information. You can do this practice on your own. You can practice as much times as you can so that you really understand what you want or what you're doing. So the next function we're going into is average. Average, yes. So average basically is when you have the sum of a range of cells divided by the number of values that you that you have summed right so this is the basic formula to get the average but in microsoft excel it is so easy that you can get the response in seconds you can get your answer in seconds so every time you want to enter a formula or a function it is important to remember to first start with the equals to sign so that you tell excel I want to enter a formula, I want to enter a function, right? So I start with the equals to sign and I type average, but in case I do not even remember what it is, I can do this. So I click here, average. So what Excel does is that Excel has selected the, the, the cell before the cell that I'm working on, which is cell I3. But this is not what I want to do, right? I want to get the average of C2 to C18. So I'm just going to select all of this inside the parentheses, and I hit the enter button on my keyboard. And this is what I have. Very easy. The average has been calculated automatically by Excel in seconds. The next interesting or important um, function to know about is count. Count. So what this function does is that it helps you to count the number of values in a range of cells. If you have, if you have um, a range of cells, maybe numbering up to 3000, for example, and you, you, you don't know what the number of values in that, in that column is, or the row is, or the range of cells are, you can use this function to know how many values are in the selected range of cells. Super easy. So I do equals, I enter my equals to sign, 
and I select count because I know what the function is and I select the range of values that I want to count. And I hit at the enter button on my keyboard. So basically from cell C2 to cell C18, I have 17 values only. Another question will be, what if I have spaces or texts in between if I have spaces or text in between the values in column C, what will happen? So let us see what will happen. Let me just try to drag this down and drag this down again, just to create more spaces. I'm going to add a text here to say sample format, right? And I keep one space, so I've entered two cells of text and I have one space left. And let us see what happens. Count, I select everything and I close the parentheses. I still have 17. And this is because the count function, take note of this, the count function only recognizes values. It does not recognize text. It does not recognize spaces. It does not recognize text and spaces when it is counting only values. So it is counting only values and this is why we still have 17, despite the fact that we added two cells of text and then we have one empty cell. Now to, to correct this or to go a step further, Excel came up with another function which is count A. So what count A does is that it counts both text and values in the range of selected cells. It counts both the text and the values in the range of selected cells. It does not count the empty spaces, the blank spaces. And we are going to do this. So equals to count A. And just to say, okay, so, um, of course, Excel also gives you a brief explanation of a particular function that is being selected, right? Just in case you're not so sure of what it does or you, you cannot quickly remember. In this particular case, I have selected count A and Excel tells me that what count A does is that it counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. So whether it contains a value or it contains text, in as much as the range of cells is not empty, count A will count it for you. And this, I am going to open the parentheses, I select all of this, and I close the parentheses. And this is what we have. So we have 17 values, and we have two cells that contains text. We have one empty cell which is not counted, and this is why we are having 19. So what I am going to do, okay, I'm going to move, I'm going to copy this rather and paste here, okay, so that I want to remove this information here and take it back to what it was. So here we have this, and this. So I'm doing this manually because I have not taken any tutorial on how to delete cells, only cells, or how to insert cells above, below, by the side. I haven't taken that tutorial yet. So this is why I'm doing it manually so that people, um, so that everyone is carried along. So I'm just going to name this count A and I am going to redo the, the function, so it calls to count A, open the parentheses and select all the range and I have this. So this is the new column that I have included and I'm just going to highlight it so that it is easy to understand. So this is count A, yeah? I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to put borders, great. And now we have this. So the next function that we're going to work on is max. What the max function does is that it pulls out the biggest value in the range of selected cells. So it returns the largest value in a set of values. 
and it says it ignores logical values and text. So if you have text, of course, text is not value. So and maximum is talking about the maximum value, right? So I just put the equals to sign, do not forget, and I type max, and I open the parentheses, and I select the range of cells, I want to know what the maximum value is, and I hit enter. So the maximum value is 158,000, right? So this is very easy. Imagine you have a range of cells, or you have a range of cells in a particular column that is about 5,000 and you're asked to get the maximum value in seconds, you can use this formula, you can use this function to get the maximum value in seconds. Super easy. Now the next function we are going to talk about today is min. So min is the opposite of max and min tells you it returns the lowest value in the group of values in the cells that you have, in the range of cells that you have selected. So while max returns the, the largest value, min returns the lowest value. And this is how we can get it. It equals to sign and you type min and you open the parentheses and you select the range of cells that you want and you close the parentheses, and this is what we have. Super easy. So we have what we have done today is how to calculate sum, average, count, count A, max, and min. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel if it is getting interesting for you. If you like the contents of this channel, please subscribe. If you are a returning subscriber, please like this content. You can also include in the comment section what you would like to see in the next videos. You can also share this channel with your friends. This channel, we are trying to make Microsoft Excel to look super easy so that we can carry everyone along. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for viewing the contents of this channel and I see you next time.